What shakes beyond the nether sphere, my fellow YouTube subscribers and subscriberettes? It is time for another collection update. Thanks for joining me once again for this exciting edition of shit I spent my money on. While I flap my gums, we're going to be listening to a great album called Beauty and Nihility by pagan black metal act called Paths. Uh, look for a new album by Paths out on Bind Rune Recordings uh, early next year, maybe mid next year. Not sure how that's going, but it's got a ton of great albums. Um, Where the Oaken Hearted Dwell is a fantastic fucking release. Uh, I don't have a copy of that. It was a limited CDR release uh, maybe three or four or five years ago or so. But this one is also great out on Wolf Spell and uh, Werewolf Promotions. Uh, so check that out if that's your thing. Count Blagareth, that's your kind of thing. You would love Paths. <laughs> so my room's a mess. All my uh, CDs are kind of a flutter all over the place. But I thought, since I'm going out of town this weekend to see Aura Noir and fucking Merciless and Ares Kingdom, Mutilation Rites, Nefarious, and... Uh, I'm forgetting something. Whatever. Um, having a good birthday weekend in Chicago. Hoping I don't get mugged or murdered or whatever. Um, hoping to have a good time. Do some record shopping. Drink some beer. Eat some good food. Um, and when I come back, I'll probably have a bunch of CDs in the mail. And CDs from... Um, what's the place we're going to? We're going to a couple record stores up there. So I'll probably come home with 20 fucking discs. Because I'm stupid. I'm really dumb. So uh, here's what I got in this last two weeks or so since we last spoke. Thorns of the Carry On, a band I keep loving to talk about. Uh, this is an original pressing of the Gardens of Dead Winter. Now, another topic I want to keep reiterating on my channel is that I'm an idiot. So sometimes what I tell you is wrong. Fake news. Um, the triple CD set that I bought of Thorns of the Carry On a few videos ago, I thought had everything on it. I thought it was the band's entire discography. Um, through some confusion, I finally realized that I was missing this album from that set. Who knows why you would release a fucking three CD set of a band's entire discography, but forget one of the two albums they released. I don't know, fucking Russians, but whatever. This, luckily, is still available sealed from um, Dark Descent Records for 14 mere dollars. And I recommend picking it up because it's a fantastic release. And also, Wild Rags Records releases are really hard to come by whatsoever. Um, they have, apparently, a bunch of dead stock shit from Wild Rags in the Dark Descent um, distro. So, if you're in the mood for some old-school 90s death metal... Packaging wise, this is just kind of shit, but uh, do check that out. It's a it's a pretty rare opportunity to buy Wild Rags releases uh, sealed, and uh, they should be collector's items already. But uh, apparently, there's still some left over, which is weird. Um, so Thorns of the Carrion, yeah, this album, um, it's kind of symphonic, kind of uh, almost vampiric sort of American death metal. Um, you could say maybe using Ceremonium as a leaping off point. You know, there's a lot of sort of melodic passages. There's some female vocals, some synth and stuff like that. Um, it gets a lot more intricate um, than most death metal bands do with their style and their atmosphere. Um, and in that way, it kind of seems to almost blend borders with a black metal band. Um, and this band would become a black metal band called Estuary of Calamity. Released a fantastic single album. I think there was just one album under that name. Uh, and then they dropped the name and changed to just Estuary. Um, had a great album or two under that name. And now, um, I, I guess that could be, you could say that is now Faith Extractor. Uh, hoping to see Ash... Uh, this, Chicago, uh, this weekend in Chicago with the chance. Anyways, Thorns of the Carry On is fucking awesome. I'm glad to finally, I think, now have their entire discography on CD. <laughs> I paid too much for this on Discogs. 
and then learned that I could have bought it for $14 from Dark Descent. Um, so I'm stupid. Uh, but I'm not too stupid to know that Morgion is a fucking awesome band. Didn't have this Solinari album, and when I was talking about um, their Among Majestic Ruin album, I realized I don't have the other two albums, Cloaked in Ages, Crowned in Earth, or Solinari. So I got this in. Uh, Relapse put this out in 1999. You should still be able to pick this up for less than $10 real easily. And you really ought to. Um, super incredible songwriting. Um, the guitar tone on this is so fucking devastating. It's just something... One of those guitar tones that you just fucking crave whenever it isn't happening. And it's just such a wonderful thing to hear. Um, yeah, just songwriting really is the, is the thing that's on display here. It's like atmospheric death doom. Uh, it's super emotive and crunchy and heavy and just... Uh, the atmosphere just fucking pulls you in so much, like a lot of death metal bands can't do. So that is Morgion, a sadly missed band. Kind of funny, though, as far as I can tell, and if I'm remembering correctly, remember I'm an idiot, uh, the rating of Morgion albums from worst to best are Among Majestic Ruin, Solinari, and then Cloaked in Ages, Crown in Earth. And I'm still waiting on my copy of Cloaked in Ages to come. Um, and I don't know if I've ever even heard that record. So I'm going from saying Morgion's Among Majestic Ruin is a fantastic record. And then getting Solinari and fucking loving the shit out of this. And so now I have in store for me their greatest album coming in the mail, hopefully. But the eBay seller that I bought it from is kind of being a little fuckhead. So we'll have to see where that goes. I had to file a claim. Um, either way, it's available for cheap, so it's not a worry. Uh, next, I got in something that kind of sounds similar to Morgion in a way, but this is Third in the Mortals, Tears Laid in Earth. Um, I should have looked this up first to make sure, but I believe this is their debut full length. Um, kind of a hard sell, I guess, with most people. This is, uh, <coughs> I guess you could say it's a progressive death metal band, kind of, from Norway. Um, the thing I like about Third in the Mortal really is, um, the really strange, progressive, sort of atonal, at times, um, dissonant guitar riffing. The really spacious sort of songwriting. Uh, and the vocals are just absolutely amazing. Carrie Ruslatten from Storms Nordavind, most uh, notably, and she has a great solo career too. She sings on this, and her vocals at this time in her career are fucking just mind-blowing. So, beautiful female vocals. Um, really spacious, atmospheric, sort of progressive doom from Norway. Um, check that out if that sounds interesting to you. This is original Head Not Found release. I don't know if this has been reissued or whatnot uh, since then, but man, remember when you could pull off an outfit like that in a band photo? Wasn't there an episode of Seinfeld about shit like that? So there is that. I, pa I paid uh, way too much for this uh, from... What was it? I, I guess I thought I read somewhere that the Australian dollar versus the US dollar was, like, really different. So, that I, so like, if you wanted... Like, if someone was charging, you know, 20 Australian dollars, you would pay, like, 12 American dollars. I could have swore I read that somewhere, and uh, maybe that changed very abruptly and quickly... And I just checked out, this is a really boring story, I shouldn't even bother telling this. Anyways, I paid too much money for this, thinking that I was going to get one over on the Australian guy who sold me this, and I wound up paying like 30 fucking dollars to get it shipped here, or whatever. Uh, next is a band I've been um, just kind of filling out the discography of Old Wayne's. This is the Religion of Spiritual Violence. This uh, full length came out in 2002. Now, the last time I talked about Old Wayne's, it was the album, uh, I'm spacing it off right now, was it Death Nord Cult? I think that sounds right. And I wasn't so hot on that album. The first half of it was kind of garbage, and the second half was pretty good. Um, now, I love Scalding Coldness and Where the Snows Are Never Gone. Those albums are fucking phenomenal Russian black metal, not sketchy as far as I know. 
Um, but this one was just one that I hadn't heard before and never checked out, so I decided to get a copy of it. Uh, upon first listen, I might have played it through twice or so. I don't know. I'm, I'm not really feeling it all that much. Again, it might be because I'm kind of in this death metal mood uh, that I've been enjoying lately, and fall is definitely Doomtober time, so I've been listening to a lot of stuff kind of like that, and the nasty sort of... Uh, European black metal, maybe just not doing it for me at this time. So, something I may want to revisit at a later time. So, along those lines also is Saturnus's Martyr. If you follow my videos, you know that this was a piece of shit I got from Amazon. Well, it's, it's still sitting here because I haven't fucking returned it. This is a piece of shit. And uh, this is the real version, and I'm so happy to have a copy of this. A real copy of this, because look at all this wonderful artwork. And there's a booklet with band photos and lyrics. And since I got a copy of the real thing, I looked in the booklet and realized that Kim Larson plays in this band. And I didn't and that didn't click with me until I got a, feel, a real copy of this. Kim Larson is a, a brilliant songwriter in his solo project Of the Wand and the Moon, as you should know. Um, one of the probably most well-known neo-folk bands or projects currently out there. Uh, but this is a lot different. Um, there's, you know, four or five other members of this band making um, super melodic, atmospheric uh, doom. <clears throat> but doom, in, not, not necessarily funeral doom and definitely not anything like a stoner doom um but this is more along the lines of maybe other danish bands like celestial season or um gosh i don't know maybe kind of like the gathering a little bit here and there um but uh this is an album that is really good <laughs> i don't know like like i said I, I talked about this album a couple of videos ago when I first heard it, it blew me away, and then upon second listen, I was kind of like, eh, maybe not feeling it. I put this in again the other day, finally, and it really did it for me again. Um, it's just not really the kind of thing that I ordinarily listen to, so I don't really have a lot of faculties to describe it, as far as I know. There's a couple of bonus tracks on this album. Um, so yeah, check out Martyr, if that sounds interesting to you. Obviously, as always, links down below. So you can check out anything I talk about. Are you doing that? Do you guys actually click on those things? Do you listen to the music that I tell you to check out? Because I do sometimes. Um, so I have made a friend by way of my YouTube channel. His name is Chandler Brown. Um, and I just learned the other day he's going to become a YouTuber any day now. He's going to start shooting videos. But uh, I always look forward to seeing what Chandler comments underneath my videos because he and I... Just see to eye to eye on a lot of melodic and orchestral sort of black metal records like Abigor, Obtained Enslavement, stuff like that. So uh, Chandler on his Instagram also recommends albums every now and then. And if I haven't heard of them or don't know of them, I always check them out. Sometimes I'll just blindly, well, I blindly bought this one, I'll say. Um, sometimes I'll check them out before buying them. But this, this is a recommendation he made. Uh, and I flat out said, I don't know anything about this band. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and find a copy of it and grab it because his recommendation said it was second only to an Anthems to the Welcome at Dusk by Emperor. Now, that is a super far-fetched uh, comparison to make, in my opinion. Um, this is kind of a symphonic sort of Demi Borger-esque album. Um, I feel like Demi Borger's music is black metal with orchestral sort of keyboards added on top, like frosting on top of the cake. Um, Vasania's Fire Frost Arcanum kind of comes across like the music was written at the same time as the keyboards or with the keyboards in mind. Um, so the integration of the symphonic element or keyboards um, seems a lot more comfortable and fitting um, with an album like this. However, the style doesn't really, it's not really anything I ordinarily listen to. It's uh, got the drummer from Behemoth in it, uh, so you know it's just 100% blasting the entire time. Um, and 
honestly, that gets really boring to me anymore. Um, I had a phase where if you weren't blasting, I didn't want to hear what you were doing, but I've definitely moved on to uh, different things. So, I don't know. Upon a first couple of listens, um, kind of a lukewarm reception to this record, I feel like this is kind of a generic kind of thing, and there's a lot of bands doing this sort of thing. Um, at first glance, when you first put this on, you would think, oh, this isn't really doing anything for me. But um, I really tuned my ear in and gave it a good um, bit of my attention and it's a pretty solid record so that's kind of where I'm at with this so far Chandler um, thanks for recommending it to me and I look forward to your YouTubing days to come uh, next I got this in just the other day ordered it from Earwax Records Wisconsin one of my favorite record stores in the world Ruins of Beverass Blood, Blood Vaults yeah that's right um, Malleus Maleficarum, yada, 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 the, the flame, the blazing gospel of Heinrich something or other. So I had this on LP. I pre-ordered it when it first came out. Um, and since their, the Ruins of Beverass new album, um, came out, I realized I don't really listen to Blood Vaults very often because I only have it on LP. Decided to pick up a CD copy of it, um, the artwork on this is kind of like diminished color wise and it's cropped a lot. Uh, it does fold out, but the whole album cover on the LP is just huge. And this is just like a tiny little snippet. So I'm glad I have it on LP. And actually I kind of think this looks kind of a crappy gold leaf version of this beautiful blue painted album cover that was done for the LP version. Anyways, um, I, I kind of decided, I kind of got this because I wanted to compare the new album to Blood Vaults and see what I thought um, since I hadn't listened to it very much. Um, this is a great record. It's got the Ruins of Beverass style that I, I do really love. But now that we have Exuvia, um, I do think I prefer Exuvia quite a bit to Blood Vaults. Not that this isn't a great record, but um, this... This was produced by and mixed and recorded and mastered by, I think, by um, the dude himself. And the new album, Exuvia, like I said, was done by the guy from... Boy, I'm really forgetful today. Um, I don't know. If you go to my Exuvia review, you'll see uh, all about it if you're interested in that sort of information. But... Super long album of super just atmospheric, guttural, doomy sort of death metal um, about uh, the Salem Witch Trials, I guess. Something like, maybe not Salem, but just Witch Trials and that kind of thing. Um, what was I going to say about it? Oh, the style of this album really is where I think Rose of Rast found his voice. Um going on from Phallus Semen, um, just that super guttural low bass tone with the higher kind of nastier black metal guitars over the top of it, just creating this depth and width about the whole listening experience. It's just one of the most spatial uh, headphone sort of metal bands there is out there. So next, I've got uh, Fluority, Mintid Skolkoma. So uh, this is a reissue that came out on Candlelight a couple of years ago, and of course they changed all the artwork about the reissue. Um, Flirty are a band, they're super experimental, and they have been since day one. It's Norwegian black metal. They put out, an, they put out this album back in, oh, 93, uh, and it's really rare, um, and it's kind of, it's pretty underground. I don't think a lot of people know about it. Um, it's very untraditional, and I think... If you get this expecting it to sound anything like Dark Throne or Burzum or Mayhem, you're going to be completely wrong. Um, it's probably closest uh, brethren would probably be Vedbo and Zenda. Um, and the reason I bought this is because I saw the other day that Carl Michael of Vedbo and Zenda uh, and Orinoir, and I hope to meet him this weekend, he posted that Flority uh, has premiered a new song from their new album, and it's fucking awesome. I'm really stoked to hear a new album from these guys. Their last album was 17 years ago in 1999, Department of Apocalyptic Affairs. Um, pretty interesting album. I was kind of listening to that um, in the excitement of their new track premiere. Uh, and decided to get this because I didn't have it. And it also includes um, 
a uh, compilation track that was only available on the compilation that originally was released on, as well as the A Darker Shade of Evil demo, which is something I had heard before. Um, I think I had to download it to get it. Anyways, uh, Candlelight completely ruined all of the packaging. There is zero vestige of original artwork contained therein, except for maybe a band photo here. So all you get is this fucking generic packaging. Uh, and all history of this release is completely erased. Um, a topic I just can't stop bitching about on my, on my channel. Anyways, um, the music is pretty interesting. I have only listened to maybe half of it. Uh, once since getting the disc and uh, the demo material I listened to a couple of times maybe eight to ten years ago so I'm really out of touch with what this sounds like um, but that's what I know of it so far last album I'm filling out my unholy discography this is the debut from unholy from the shadows I talked about this band uh, in great length in my death doom albums video um, so, I had three other albums, but this is the one of four that I didn't have. And this is the one that is most death metal, most uh, normal, I guess I would say, of their discography. But it's still pretty fucking weird. It's pretty far out there. There's some really odd uh, sort of female vocals going on. There's some avant-garde sort of keyboard elements. Uh, there's some very elementary ideas going on here, and it has its charm for sure. So, there's nothing brutal about this album. There's really nothing all that super heavy about it. Uh, it just happens to have its feet pretty firmly planted in the death metal of that time, um, but reaching and grasping towards something a lot more doomy, a lot more atmospheric, avant-garde and strange. Um, I should definitely show you the... Uh, this is one of the coolest band photos I've ever seen, I swear. This is one of my favorite fucking band photos. I think I had seen it before uh, online somewhere, but having it in this booklet is so fucking cool. Um, so yeah, super crazy finish Doom Death uh, from, I'm, I'm going to guess, 93, I want to say. So Avant-Garde reissued this. Yeah, 93. Um, reissued this in 99. You may be able to find a copy of this for $20 or so out there. Uh, highly recommend doing it. The thing that I took away from this most upon listening to it uh, a couple of times is the vocals. Uh, the death metal vocals in this are fucking just spine shattering. At times, sometimes he kind of sounds like somewhere between like Chris Reifert. Other times he sounds like Martin Van Drunen. But Van Drunen has the voice, but where this guy, he just is grasping for the fucking thunder from the heavens. It's fucking amazing vocals i've never heard anyone sound so fucking insane on a metal record so check this out give it a listen give it a buy if that sounds up your alley that's all i've got as far as i know i'm caught up on my uh new additions to the collection although the mailman is probably going to be dropping by here any day now with another of my daily cds thanks for joining me thanks for subscribing and keep listening to metal that is good and yeah, see you next time.